Hello guys, in this video I will finish the review of Justin Byrne milling project with Livewire examples. This project has quite a lot of Livewire things, so if we navigate to app HTTP Livewire, there are quite a few components and let's see what's inside with five examples. In fact, there will be four Livewire examples and one Alpine JS kind of along the way. And let's take a look what's inside and let's see what we can learn from Livewire and what advice I can give to improve that. The first example of Livewire in this project is approval of the user from the admin area. So in the table of users, here it is from the admin area. If you have a user which is not approved, you will see a button to approve. So let's create a new user. I will use fake filler Chrome extension to fill it in. We create that user and this is not Livewire yet. It's a typical Laravel controller, but here you see the button of approve. And when we approve, the whole page isn't refreshed, only this button is refreshed to show that the user is approved already. Basically, this button disappears. So how it works? In the blade of users index blade here, in a typical table, so for each table, TD and all of that, one of those details is Livewire component. And this is actually a perfect example how I see Livewire in general. It is for small dynamic things on the page. It shouldn't be a full page component, so you shouldn't build your whole project on Livewire. You should add it whenever suitable. So approval is a great example. Admin users approval is in app HTTP Livewire admin users approval. So here's the component and it's pretty simple. First, it accepts the user as the parameter. So in here, user is a variable which is passed and then it's automatically kind of route model binding. So in Livewire is just assigning the variable with the type and then you render the approval button, the blade, which is this one. In resources, use Livewire admin users approval blade. Each Livewire blade has to have a tag, so HTML tag, which is div by default. And then if user is not approved, then we show that button with wire click to approve. And approve is the method of the same component here, which just updates the user and that's it. So whenever that approve happens, the render happens also, which refreshes, re-renders that part of a button. And since that user is already approved, then this condition changes and the button disappears. So here's how it looks. I just click the approve and it disappears in a fraction of a second without refreshing all of the page. So this is, I guess, the perfect example of Livewire for a small dynamic part of the page. The only thing I would improve here probably is probably not passing the full user object. In fact, we can change this condition if user approved to the non-Livewire. So we can check if the user is not approved. Here we don't even show that button. So and if like this. And then we pass only user ID. So user ID would be the variable, for example, user ID like this. And then approval component accepts integer user ID, right? And then the component has less data because for the table of users, imagine there are like hundreds of users and you pass all the object to each of the components. It's kind of a pointless usage of RAM memory, which will contain all the users objects for all the user, which it does already from the controller. So why duplicate that? We just pass the user ID. And in here we need to do some magic to check this. So for example, if approved equals not one, then we show that button and approved, let it be by default public integer approved equals zero by default. But when we approve, we set that this approve approved equals one, right? And instead of doing this user update, we do user where ID equals user ID or this user ID actually update like this or maybe even user find. I'm not sure if it would work in one sentence, but let's try it out. User find and then update. Let's try if I didn't break anything with this live coding. We refresh the table, it works. Let's create a dummy user with fake filler Chrome extension again. So yeah, the button appears and if I click, 
Yep, so nothing really is broken. So the optimization that you just saw was just to have smaller amount of data passed into LiveWire component just to save some memory. It is especially important if you pass the object with relationships and with additional data which stores even more data in the memory. The second example of LiveWire in this project is the comments section for a recipe. So recipe page looks like this and at the bottom of the page here I have a lot of dummy data which I entered. Here's a comment section where you can add the comment and this is done with LiveWire. Again a good example of small portion of the page, dynamic part done by LiveWire. So when we load comment section again full recipe is passed. I'm not sure about that but let's take a look. The component looks like this automatically pass the recipe so we have full recipe object and then we have a comment which is bounded to this text area. So we render the component, render the blade. To do that we load comments and user relationship to show all the comments and in the comments blade we have this HTML and in here it makes much more sense to pass full object because recipe object is handled with a lot of methods related to the object itself. It's not just recipe ID. So first we check if recipe comments exist. So if there is no comment basically we show this thing and this can be improved actually. So in here let's take a look at the debug bar and it's great that the developer installed Laravel debug bar. Let's take a look at the amount of queries it's 14 queries and if you can see down below, I'm not sure if I can zoom it in, yeah I can. So down below there are two queries which are kind of duplicating each other. So first we load the comments of the recipe which is done in the component here, right? And then we load the comments again for the existence. I have a separate video on this YouTube channel and I will link it in the description below about these symbols and what those two symbols can do. But in general, the thought is that we load the comments here so we don't need to load it again. And to do that, we just use recipe comments. And instead of exists, we do count, for example. So this is an eloquent collection already. And then we fire count method on the collection and it will return zero, which means basically false or some number. And if we refresh the page now, we see 13 queries, not 14 but we still load the comments and the actual result is correct. We still see that line. So that was just a side note not related to LiveWire at all. Then we have the form itself with text area and as I said it's wire model 2 comment and I really like this part. If recipe has comments from user it's really readable so it doesn't matter what's inside here but while reading the code it's totally clear what it does. We can actually take a look if recipe model contains what that has comments from user. Okay, it's a check if this comments has user ID. Okay, it could be written in many different ways, but fair enough, checking the comments with user ID, cool. So the form and then for each of the comments, so that is not related to live wire, this is related. Add comment, what happens in add comments method? So this validate, what does it validate? Okay, we have rules of comment required, great. So it validates that the comment is present and then we just add the comment to this recipe comments create. Again, in here it makes sense to have the full object of recipe and use has many relationship and that's it. So if we add any comment, something, something, comment, the comment stays here and the form disappears. I don't necessarily agree with this implementation because apparently one user can have only one comment but maybe it is by design for that project for the recipes. Basically this becomes true and then the form isn't shown anymore. Again quite a nice small implementation of LiveWire for the comments section. The third example will be actually not LiveWire but Alpine.js which comes from the same author Kayla Porzio who created both LiveWire and Alpine.js. And here's an example how you can implement a really quick small JavaScript for this type of input. So while creating the recipe, one of the fields is allergens. So there is a list of allergens and you can enable or disable or in fact there are three state for every allergen. So you can click once, you can click twice or you can disable it. And in the code, in the blade of create new recipe, simple blade, so it's not live wire, it's blade from Laravel the section, let me scroll it, yeah. For each of the allergens, 
this is Alpine. So what is Alpine? You add that to package JSON just as a library, or you can use it from CDN just by loading JavaScript in your script tag. And then you have some kind of a small section of data, for example, level no, which is a variable initiated for this specific allergen for this specific diff section. And then inside of that, you have some syntax for small events to change that data. So for example, X on click, the level will be changed with JavaScript function of change level. And it's down below somewhere here in the script section of change level. So if it's no return to may, if it's may return to yes, change to yes. And if it's yes, change to no. So then the class changed. So if the level is no, the condition, then the class of that span is allergen level no, allergen level may or yes. So basically, visually, it changes. Again, click, changes, click, changes without any refresh of the page. So Alpine.js is generally a small JavaScript library to potentially replace jQuery to achieve some small interactions like this one. If you want to know more about Alpine.js, I have a separate video with introduction in seven minutes about Alpine.js, and I will link that in the description below. Example number four of Livewire, we're getting back to Livewire now from Alpine.js. It's probably the most complicated Livewire component so far we've seen in this video, is for creating recipe and managing the ingredients of the recipe. So this section is quite dynamic with a lot of logic. So you can add an ingredient amount and then search for ingredient, for example, sugar, and it's auto-completing. You can choose the sugar, you can add it to the list, or you can remove it. Or, for example, you can add your own ingredient, for example, water, and you can add water, then it appears in the list. Also, it's adding like this. And then next time when you search water, it is auto-completed now, right? And then the ingredients are saved like a many-to-many -many relationship with recipe. Cool. So how to implement that in Livewire? In the blade file of creating the recipe, it's just loading the Livewire component without any parameters, but there may be a parameter of recipe because that component is reused for editing the recipe. And then there's a Livewire component for app HTTP Livewire recipes create. In fact, I would rename that component because it's not creating the recipe, it's actually managing the ingredients for the recipe. So probably I would rename that to ingredients edit or something like that. But still, you may have the recipe passed, as I said, and the mount method, which is basically the constructor of the live wire component, does these things. Reset the query, which is the private function or public function, but inside of the same live wire component is just resetting some variables. So quantity, ingredients, and autocomplete and stuff like that. We are getting back to the mount. So basically it's resetting the empty values. And if we have the recipe, it is filling in the recipes. Actually, if we go to recipes list, for example, and click any recipe, which I've just added the dummy data and click edit. So this is what happens when we have the existing recipe. So we fill it in with ingredients with this for each loop. Then what happens? We render the component and in recipes create blade. What do we have here? We have two fields basically, wire model quantity and wire model to ingredients query. And these are both text fields. And the important part is wire model query debounce to 300 milliseconds. So it does the search only every 0.3 of a second. And then there is a method in the component called updated query. So updated property. So query is the name of the same this and then it searches for ingredients. So we search for ingredient where name like order by raw MySQL function of locate, we take four results and we get them. And then back to the blade if the query is not empty and if it's not auto-completed for each of the ingredients for all the ingredients that we have found, we show them and we allow to auto-complete with ingredient name. And that auto-complete basically means that we save the ingredient ID that we have chosen into a private variable ingredient ID and it's auto-completed true, basically save the temporary variable. And then when we want to actually save the ingredient, there is a plus here, wire click prevent add. And the add method in the live wire component 
just saves the data so current ingredient id with current quantity into this inputs array so inputs is actually the final variable that we will use to save all the ingredients from the live wire all the dynamic stuff and also we have private property of the same live wire component this ids to save all the ingredients and similarly if we want to remove the component remove the ingredient for each of the ingredient there's a wire click prevent remove and the remove method is unsetting the ids with the key and unsetting the inputs and also what i didn't mention for each of the results you can add a new ingredient on the fly so add ingredient with wire click prevent of create ingredient so create ingredient is a method inside of that live wire component again which validates that it's unique in the ingredients it saves in the ingredients and returns it as autocomplete with ingredient already as an object in the database and then finally how do we save that in the main form so outside of live wire so all of that form visually is laravel it's not live wire only this part is dynamic live wire so for that we fill in the input hidden fields so in the create blade of live wire for each of the inputs which is as i said the final variable of list of ingredients there are two hidden properties input type hidden quantities with key is item quantity and ingredients with key is item ingredient id so key is the index of array so 0 1 2 and stuff like that and item is an object or actually array with quantity and ingredient id and if we go back to recipes create in the recipe controller it's actually store so we store the recipe here and also for each of the request ingredients which is this ingredients and also we use quantities so request quantities and request ingredients become the variables from the laravel controller which are taken from hidden fields in the live wire component i hope it all makes sense i try to explain it pretty slowly but you can dig deeper the code is available on github and you can take a look yourself and try it out and final example number five of live wire in this project that i wanted to show is creating the menu out of recipes so imagine you have recipes like soup like coffee like whatever meals and you want to create the menu for a week and this is actually the whole point of this project as i understand is to plan a meal for you so there's a page to create the menu where you can click randomize and it will randomly pick the recipes for your week thinking about it i would actually use it myself probably but anyway back to the code how does it do it in the live wire component of menus create it's actually pretty simple menus create live wire component is array of days uh, rendering and then the methods of randomize all or randomize a specific date day of the week sorry so we're getting the ids of the recipes in random order and we just push that to the variables of recipe ids and recipes here i see already duplicated queries so this should probably be refactored so we get all the recipes and then we get recipe one by one for seven times it's seven queries to the database actually so probably this should not return plug id but it should return all the objects of recipes and then this should be from the array of recipes and not query to the database and then randomize it's basically the same thing and the same error getting where from the database again instead of using one query to get the seven records for example and in the blade if we open menus create live wire it's just the randomize button which fires randomize all which we've just seen and then for each of those days there is a visual representation of that recipe for that day and also similarly to the ingredient input type hidden variable with days array and wire model to recipe ids and that hidden variable is returned to laravel controller to actually save the menu so if we open menu controller store method in the menu controller actually accepts request input day or in fact it has private days and then we check if there is a input for monday tuesday and so on 
So again, a live wire component for part of the page, not that small anymore for like half of the page. So you randomize this and this changes without refreshing the whole page. There are a few more live wire examples in this project, but they seem to be not finished. For example, ingredients index the table of ingredients. If we go to admin and then ingredients, the list is here, it's live wire table, but I don't see too big point of using live wire here because the table could be just from the controller and the model. The idea here is to have a search variable to search for ingredients by like, but I don't see the search actually implemented here, so I cannot comment more. It's potentially a bigger live wire component with data table or search or filters but for now it's unfinished so i won't really comment on that and that's it the examples of livewire and alpine one example of alpine as well what do you think about livewire in general and these examples comment down below any questions also use the comment section and if you want to support my mission of shooting these daily videos about livewire and laravel you can check out one of the three products that you can see on the screen now, Livewire Kit set of components with examples like these one. There are currently, I think it's 33 components. Also, there is quick admin panel generator of Laravel. Also has a Livewire version, by the way, pretty recently launched in 2021. And you can take one or more of my courses on Teachable Platform, which also includes Livewire in some of the courses. And see you guys in other videos.